I mean, it was a daycare that my aunt actually worked in um, when I went to high school. Um, been closed down for probably about three or four years uh, prior to me. You know, just going back home, going to different things I do in business. Um, and it's meant something to me. Um, I worked there, like I said, when I was coming through high school. I've been there numerous times picking up from work. Um, and also, it's right across the street from um, a gym called Rocky Mount Wilson, where I started out playing AAU basketball. Um, so it just meant something to me. Um, it's just one of those foundational pieces uh, for my family. Um, it's uh, tied to, you know, my grandmother's name. Um, it's called um, um, Mom Pudding's Child Care. Um, my grandmother, her nickname was known as Pudding. Everybody known her around the neighborhood or anybody who ever known her, that's what she was known by. Um, so um, it means a lot to me, honestly, just to give back and just actually have that staple um, in the community where, um, you know, people can come and, you know, bring their kids and, you know, just get the right child care um, throughout the system, you know, that we need around our area. Um, we haven't we don't have many daycares around our area in general, or maybe like, you know, two or three. Um, but, you know, something I kind of, you know, poured into, um, it was a long process, it's just going throughout the state and just getting all the requirements and, um, you know, all the laws that we had to get up to date. Um, poured a lot of time and um, effort um, into it, um, but it's something that's going to be, like I said, a staple for my family for a long time to come. I was going to say, your aunt must appreciate that you're the owner yeah yeah um and she's still here she's still around she still lives back home um in north carolina um crazy thing is the house where i bought my family is probably like uh 10 minutes from um that daycare but you know my house is dumped off um uh, how i wanted it for my family um uh, that was the first thing i said i was gonna do uh, for my family was to put them in the house uh, my grandmother was able to see that she was able to live in that house and enjoy it um up to the time when she's passed um but yeah, um, you know, my aunt still is involved. Um, and like I said, it was just, you know, it had that insight and her to know and being able to work in childcare throughout those many years um, was a great, uh, you know, jump starter as well. Um, and then for us to buy the one that she actually uh, worked at, you know, years prior to that, you know, means a lot. Any other in-person questions? Um, you guys obviously lost two straight and you had a really convincing win against the Grizzlies. What was the, the mindset of the team after two losses going into that game? Um, we just wanted to get back in the win column. Um, we went to two games that we kind of, you know, took lightly um, with opponents that we kind of had already played, thinking it was going to come out and you know, be that same type of win. Um, and they punched us in the mouth. You know, it was, about, it was really about responding last night, but it was just – Get back to um, that win column, doing the things that we're known for doing and how we're accustomed to playing, really. Um, and it was more so, um, you know, just looking at ourselves in the mirror. You know, we're not one of those teams that have arrived yet. Um, I think we got um, a little accustomed to winning um, a little bit. And those two losses, you know, kind of woke us back up to, you know, basically realize, you know, that we haven't done anything yet. You know, it's just only the start, you know. Um, time to get back in the lab, time to get back in the office and get back to work. Um, I think that's all it was about last night. Um, we came out and played with the right uh, defensive intensity to start of the game. Um, and that's we kind of have those lapses of where we start out that good and then we kind of die out uh, once we get up. And I don't think that, you know, took place last night. I think we kind of put together a full 48, you know, minute defensive game. Uh, what do you guys got to do against Giannis on stage for a challenge defensively? Um, you guys have questions all the NBA, brother. Uh, what they're going to do. Uh, we got this, he's a tough player. Um, he, He's a guy that comes down and, you know, causes a lot of problems on the offense in the floor, and he uh, goes down on defense in the floor, protects the basket uh, for his team. But at the end of the day, he's another player just like everybody else in this league um, that we're going to go in with a game plan on, you know, how to get him out of things that he does well. I mean, as simple as that. Um, we can't go in and, you know, look at it like, you know, we're playing uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, I mean, everybody in this league is good, man. Everybody in this league is a player. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be here. So we're just going to go into it with another game plan up. Uh, you know, not shutting down Giannis Antetokounmpo, but more so how we're going to defeat the Milwaukee Bucks. And you seem to take uh, a lot more hard uh, falls than like anyone else on the team. Uh, you get back up, and sometimes it seems like they, they hurt. Uh, how do you kind of deal with those? Um, what have you learned about dealing with those? Um, I'm, I'm built a little bit different, man. Uh, I'm not really built how everybody else is. I'm from, you know, small town area that's, you know, country. Yeah, so really, um, a lot of my background and upbringing, I uh, played football all the way up until my last year of high school, brother. So this physicality is something that I, 
uh, I long for something that I kind of, you know, enjoy doing. And so all the bumps and the bruises kind of just playing into the neck of, you know, how I like to play in this game is starting to get back um, more physical than it was a couple of years before, man. So, you know, like I said, I grew up around watching players like um, Zach Randolph, you know, guys who like to bang and booze, um, get down there, you know, create havoc, uh, you know, shacks of the world, Charles Barkley, guys like that, they like to, you know, be boosters around that rim. So um, it's nothing that I'm really um, not accustomed from happening, honestly, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm from a small area that kind of is raised on that toughness and that, you know, grit and grind. Um, you know, I come from playing uh, on dirt basketball courts, brother, so it's not a lot of fouls out there. And uh, what position you play? Uh, I play everything, honestly, tight end, defensive end. Um, I punt it. I was a kicker. Um, I went to a 1A uh, high school all the way up until my last year high school, man. But you know, I was an athlete. I didn't just uh, stick to basketball, man. I played basketball, baseball, football, and also uh, I went to states and track. Yeah, I went to states and track in the discus world. So uh, I'm a uh, discus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won uh, 1A um, probably – in our conference and region, I want to say three years straight, and I placed uh, fourth in states two years. What's the longest field goal there? Uh, honestly, we didn't really kick for field goals like that, bro. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was only kick off and punt, brother. We didn't really kick field goals. We line, we score, we going for two. Cause I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> so we ain't really. Had, I mean, we practiced it, but we never really used it. <laughs> Um, I mean, honestly, um, every sport you can look up to a different athlete and, um, I'm a football guy. Um, that was one of my, you know, big things my dad was into, um, and also my little brothers, um, my little brother went to school and played, uh, um, offense and defense lineman for Shawan, honestly. Um, so, um, football, um, our household is kind of crazy uh, when it comes to NFL teams. Um, I didn't really have one. Growing up in college, but I went to the University of Louisville, and around that time, it was, they was really good in football, man. Uh, I think they won the Orange Bowl. Teddy was there. Um, I got to see uh, um, Devontae Parker, who was another guy in the NFL, Calvin Pryor, who played in the NFL a little bit. So, you know, I was riding with um, you know, my college team. As far as the NFL, I was a Falcons fan. I uh, still am a Falcons fan, even though they're – Gonna make me cut my hair or do something crazy here. Uh, I keep cheering for him, but uh, I'm a Falcons fan. I've been a Falcons fan since Vic and Work done and those guys back in the day. Um, as far as baseball, I really didn't really get into baseball like that. Um, I played it. Um, That's actually the sport my dad first brought me up on. I could switch hit and everything, and then I had a growth spurt and kind of put the bat down. Um, so I never really had a, a MLB team. Um, uh, track. I really, I really never watched it, honestly. Um, it was more so one of those things I kind of got into because I knew it was going to help me as far as my other sports, basketball, football, with um, agility, footwork, um, you know, and also speed, uh, you know, a lot of different uh, agility movements and uh, just going out there and, uh, you know, running sleds and running with the parachute on. So just a lot of different things that's going to help me um, in other sports. I was looking at discus. I mean, I was looking at track. Um and then uh, the crazy thing is our track coach who was also like my personal trainer, um, somebody that my dad grew up with for a long time, um, you know, even before I was thought about. Um, and he also coached football for us. So it just worked out. He was just um, involved in all our sports uh, throughout the school, but he was also just training me on the side as personal trainer. So um, I picked up discus and was trying it, um, ended up mastering the technique uh, with the spin and everything. I got really good at it. Um, and, you know, it's crazy because I – was trying to get out of going to regional track meet so I could play in the AAU game. Um, and my dad still ended up making it happen. It was crazy, man. Um, I went to the re regional track meet in North Carolina a and And then me and my dad got in the car right after the, uh, my event and drove to um, Virginia for an AAU game. Um, so, man, it's big kudos to my dad, man, for doing that, um, making that drive. But, you know, like I said, man, I'm, I'm an athlete, man. I, been involved in sports for a long, long time, honestly. So, you know, you play every game, as if it were a game of service. And we also know that professionals have their standards. But when you have the advanced NBA shots and schedules and the equities, it's a big deal. Um, 
Nah, I mean, not myself, honestly, man, because um, going into this game, I kind of look at it like, you know, every one of these games could really be my last time playing the game. Um, it's how I approach the game. It's the energy I come out with. So, um, I mean, I don't really look at it as, you know, anything really different um, just because these guys won the uh, NBA championship last year. Um, I mean, it's going to be like that every year. Uh, everybody, somebody's going to host up that trophy, honestly. So, no, nah, I don't really look at it as another um, – you know, energy grabber or something that hypes me up towards the game. I don't really need any of that to, you know, hype me up to play the game of basketball because, like I said, I wake up every day and my job is to lace up my shoes and go play basketball. Like, I'm blessed. When is the last time you played here? Um, I had cut my hair in probably like four or five years. I don't plan on cut that. <laughs> I don't plan on cut. Nah, I ain't trimming. I ain't cutting nothing, man. I continue to let it keep going. Um, it's one of those things, those journeys that you know, I look at. If you start in the process of doing something, taking care of your hair, and doing other things you do, you get blow dry and all that stuff, man. You kind of treat it like a kid, man. You cut it, it was like pointless to start this journey. <laughs> hey, Trez, uh, what position did you play in baseball? Uh, outfield and catcher. I pitched for a little while. Um, I ran middle school all the way up into the high school, but once you get in high school, it's a different mode, man. They 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 get to them pitches, man. They knowing the pitches, so I was getting teed off on a couple of times, man. So I had to get out that mile. Um, but I played catcher and uh, outfield for uh, for a while, honestly. Um, crazy thing is, uh, my best position probably was catcher, even though the height that I am is it, crazy. Um, but like I said, I was I was a sponge, man. I you know solid uh, position that kind of put me at, um, you know, and I was like, I sailed in it, man. I, I don't really um, complain about, you know, the, the situation I'm kind of in, man. I just kind of make the best of them, really. Um, so that's what they kind of st stuck me at. That's what I was playing. And, you know, I mastered that position to the point where, you know, I got awards in my house <laughs> all throughout middle school for doing shit at catcher. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, bro, I just make best of, you know, my situation, my surroundings, man. If it's not basketball, what other sports do you think could maybe Olympics? I don't know about Olympics, man. Oh, that's 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 a sports stretch. I haven't even you know cracked that. You know, my home sport. Um, uh, but I don't know, man. I probably would have uh, probably would have got real big in the football a little bit more heavily. I uh, took it a lot more seriously. I mean, I could have went to college to play football. Honestly, uh, NC State. Uh, you know, a couple more like. Uh, major schools that would have let me play both sports, honestly, man. But to be real with you, my thing with football is, bro, I ain't, I ain't really locked in practicing all week for one game, bro. You can keep that. You, you practice all week, man, to hype yourself up for that one game. Now, what if you go out and have a shit game on that Friday or Saturday? You got to wait a whole another week, brother, before you try to redeem yourself. Mm -mm. And you got to go a whole another week and somebody fighting for your spot. It's, just, nah, bro, look, it's too much, man too much. So I already practice as hard as I can go, man. So imagine me practicing all week that hard. I'm going to burn myself out for that Friday or Saturday. You know, then like I said, you put up a bad performance that Friday or Saturday. Got with a whole another week of, you know, am I going to get my spot taken? I got to go at this guy for my spot and then I got to try to perform again next week. Nah, man. You doing the basketball or you have a bad game on Monday, man. You get to the gym on Tuesday, you wash it out, man. Most likely you're going to play again on Wednesday. <laughs> right back up to try it again, you know, and then after that, you might got Thursday again, you know, so I, I like to, you know, constantly, you know, be active playing my sport, um, constantly, you know, being able to get better and work on the game, man. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that in football, but, you know, I feel like in football, you definitely going to have to, you know, tone down on your, on your training um, to, you know, be able to get the longevity in, in the aspect, you know, as far as basketball, I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where, you definitely got to constantly keep, you know, picking up on the fly. And I think that's kind of something that I gravitate to because, uh, you know, I love being around this game. Um, I'm probably going to come back here later on and watch the go-go team. I'm about to go home now and watch the last game the Bucks play um, for preparation. So, I mean, like I said, man, you got to love what you do. And you know, I love this game of basketball. Neil? Yeah. Um, what is your thoughts? Can you just kind of compare and contrast, you know, the energy in yesterday's shoot around compared to the one previous and, you know, how that could stand out to you as, yeah, okay, I, I can see what the issues were. Um, I don't know what issues you're talking about, brother. Um, well, Junior, I don't know if he was in the shoot around or not, um, if that was said or whatever, brother, but I mean, no, that's an in-house, um, you know, kind of 
thing that we take care of. Right? It's something that we kind of, you know, police of ourselves. And, you know, yeah, we can mention and talk about it and say, you know, let's be better. Um, but, you know, it's kind of an in-house thing. And I think that's going to kind of stay in-house, brother. I'm not about to get up here and air out, you know, what we're doing in the morning and how we're coming and approaching it. So. Is it at least encouraging that you guys are able to self-police that and kind of nip it in the butt uh, before it becomes an extended thing? I mean, honestly, I, I don't think it's the same thing, brother. You brought it up. Uh, nobody has said anything about it in our locker room. Nobody has said anything about it on the court for us, brother. We just had a full practice and a full uh, preparation for shooter, basically shoot around tomorrow for us again, brother. And I haven't heard one thing about it except for what you just said. So, yeah, it's not lingering for us. Maybe just for you. Understood. Thanks, Tres. Yes, sir. Tres Jones. Hey, Tres. Hope you're doing well. How you doing, my guy? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Well, speaking about your game, you're struggling pretty well this season. What is the biggest difference about Montrezl Harrell this season and Montrezl Harrell, Harrell at Lakers? Uh, Montrezl Harrell is on the floor, brother. That's that's the biggest difference. Um, you know, and once again, I'm not really going to harp on last year, but I didn't really get to, like I said in the earlier media, man, uh, for me today, I felt like I had a year off, brother. You know, I started out playing uh, with the team, and then, you know, once we had a little turmoil and injuries, it, it went to multiple DMPs and me not playing, you know, but I'm not going to cause a, a disturbance in the locker room. I'm not going to be um, a problem for my team. I'm going to constantly come and cheer my teammates on and cheer the guys on the floor. Simple as that. But the biggest difference, brother, is Montrezl Harris on the floor here, and Montrezl Harris didn't play last year. Simple as that. I don't, I, didn't, I don't approach the game any different. I don't, you know, do any different work that I don't come in and, you know, do my preparation any different. I was going and preparing, practicing, and giving my all the same exact way how I'm doing here. Only difference is my coach put me on the floor. And also, you the you have cre you create your chemistry as a team. You create a great relationship with Brad on and off the floor. How beneficial is this for you in, um, uh, in this team? Um, I mean, it's big, brother. Um, you know, when, when you play this game for um, a while and uh, when you've been around um, in the city for a little bit, man, you try to find a home. You're trying to find somewhere where you can, uh, you know, have a city, an organization, appreciate the things that you do and what you bring to the floor night in and night out, man. So um, it's big, man. Um, I'm not really worrying about uh, on the back end, um, but, you know, as a basketball player, you know, you think, um, you know, this is a contract year for me, but I'm not really worrying about that, man. I'm, I'm more so focused on enjoying the, the moment, enjoying um, where I'm at um, and, you know, just basically giving my all to an organization and a team like I do every year. Every time I lace my shoes up, every time I put a jersey on, brother, um, if I am blessed to be able to, you know, be here and call it a home for a long stint of time, then, you know, that's what you aim to do. Um, but, I mean, I'm just really just coming in being a, a veteran and a professional, you know, how coaches ask me, man. I'm one of the older guys in our locker room. Um, with a young group of guys, and you know, I'm just trying to make sure that I show that veteran uh, leadership both on and off the court because um, you know it's a long season. Coach Pedino should be really proud about you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Last question to Wayne. Hey, hey what's good, Tres? How you doing, brother? All right, yourself? I'm good. Just quick question for you, man. Um, nine games in, you've been playing awesome to start. Can you tell me one thing you've been happy with uh, within these nine games about your game? Individually? Um, just being able to play the game of basketball, man. Like I said, being able to get back out there on the floor and just uh, play, man. Um, I'm a guy who loves to be around the game. I'm a guy who loves to, you know, hoop and just be out there doing, you know, basically my job, man. Um, I travel around all summer playing the game. Um, I've been to a numerous amount of leagues, uh, ABL, Drew League. Um, I wanted to get out here to the Brunson League uh, in D.C., man. So, it's, like you said, I'm, I'm just – I'm a competitor, brother. So um, really just being able to be out there on the floor, man, and just helping my team um, pile on wins, man. Us, you know, make a name for ourselves and change the culture around here in D.C. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that um, I really wanted to kind of attack this year. And I think we've been doing it. I think it's been showing, man. I, I, I've i been on opposing teams where we came in and played the Wizards, man. And it, the energy in the building, it hasn't been – um, you know, nothing like I'm seeing in these first couple of home games that we've been having. Um, and, and it feels amazing to be a part of that. Um, the hear guy, the hear guy, a good point, bro. Go uh, a lot of the fans are saying 
you know, you're kind of spearheading hearing that uh that culture, that dog mentality. Uh, how does that feel to know that you're one of the, you know, guys that have kind of changed our culture for the, for the team going forward? Uh, brother, to be honest with you, man, it's a, a tremendous honor and a blessing, man. Um, I mm-hmm. look at myself as, you know, a dog and that, that playing that on the dog role for a long time. It's it's my brand. It's something that I have as a business um, in closing. Um, but, you know, I looked at myself for, you know, being that for a long amount of time, man, just to be able to, you know, come to a city or organization and, you know, to be around, um, you know, full out fan base that actually sees that. And, you know, like I said, know about it man like this this is what the district is man the district is that that hard nose grit um you know basically people that come and put their hard hats on every day go to work grind and get it man that, that's what the district is known for that's how they have always been how they've been brought up even when they was back with you know the bullets areas man so um i'm just you know like i said extremely blessed and honored to you know be able to help you know get that culture and get that you know whole DC vibe back, um, you know, to actually be able to call ourselves, you know, the, the district, you know, that, that's big to have a nickname and be able to, you know, carry yeah. that like that, you know, a lot of people you go to the cities and stuff like, oh, we're playing Milwaukee, you know, we're playing, um, you know, uh, 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 Philly, you know, something like that, you know, but to have a name like, you know, Washington and be called like the district, you know, that's big or, you know, Atlanta be called ATL, like that, that holds weight, brother. Um, so, like I said, to be able to, um, you know, kind of get that name back and actually uh, put some, you know, starting to get respect towards it, man, it's big. And I just want to continue to keep that going for uh, my team, my organization, and just for the fans in general. What is it like playing for him? Kyle has mentioned that as long as you know, he tells you guys, as long as it's good defense, you can react to it. What's it like to play for Coach? Uh, it is uh, kind of like that. I think he's pretty hard on us on defense. Um, offensively, he gave us the freedom to to play and um, you know use everybody's ability offensively to to make the right play. Also, um, so it's it's great. It's been great, uh, and I think that's the biggest thing. And defensively, we have to play hard. We have to follow the rules, and and offensively, we it kind of goes to the creativity and uh, the talent that we have. Um, but also being unselfish and moving the ball, which is one of the, the, the things that offensively he, he tell us about, and he's always um, trying to make sure we're taking the right shot. You, you're sharing the ball, and it's been shown on numbers, you know, the numbers of assists that we, we've had the, the, the past games. Um, so it's been great. And he's very even-tempered, you know, just calm demeanor. Is it easy to play for him? Yeah, uh, I mean, that literally, I think, helps. And when you have coaches going crazy on the sideline, I think he affects the team and the teams kind of uh, take that energy. And uh, and he is pretty calm, you know. I think very rarely you see him complaining to the referees or uh, uh, yelling or, or, you know, doing those things, which is uh, makes makes easier for us as players to just be out there just thinking about the game and not worrying about if he's going to, uh, be mad or if he's gonna, uh, you know, be intense or any kind of way that, um, you know, sometimes you need it as a player. But I think uh, at this point, for for me, for myself, I think it's uh, it's very nice to play for him. Um, it's hard to say one thing. I, I always see it as a bigger picture, you know, it's not only um, one, maybe my three point percentage or, you know, it's hard to say one thing, but just getting better and, and fitting on, I think the fitting on the team uh, coming back from last year on a team that has so many new players, I think fitting on the team and having a, a, a solid role, I think that was what I wanted for, for the season. And then, um, numbers and points and assists, I think those are, will come, you know, that's something that I don't really worry about when I'm playing, you know, I, I think having a solid uh, role and having um, something that the, the team knows that I'm going to do, you know, if it's playing hard on defense and bringing the ball faster, uh, changing the speed of the game when I come out of the bench. So I think um, to answer your question, I think it's having a, a solid role and, 
a, a spot on the team. That was what I wanted from from this season. Good. I think. Uh, I mean, it's still early. You know, we're still figuring out what um, everybody has to 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 give to this team. Uh, we still have guys injured that you know coming in and out of the of the rotation and. Um, uh, Spencer with like I think he has some limits many limits which I think also changes the rotation so um, but so far I think it's been good speaking of uh, injuries you played really well last night uh, it's easy to forget that you were still playing with a wrap on that shoulder um, how has that been for you and, and what type of things do you have to do to just to keep playing uh, it's been fine uh, the the tape is just to kind of like not forget that I'm still not 100% over there, you know, that, I, you know, I don't bump into people. And, um, but yeah, our training staff has been doing a great job with me. And, uh, you know, I've been spending a lot of time doing recovery, doing things to, to just get my body right. Uh, I think one thing I learned from last year is that I'm always going to have something going on and I'm always going to have to play through it. And, uh, but it's something that doesn't doesn't bother me and doesn't affect my game. Yeah, I was gonna say last year that was a theme for you. You always had something going on and you never missed much time. Um, I, I mean, it's just I think being tough and wanting to be out there. Uh, you know, when you have an opportunity after so many years in the league to play, you don't want to. Um, you don't want to have reasons to sit out, you know, you don't want to have the reasons to not play a game or to uh, have a limited minute. So I think it was just doing the work at, at, at the, the, the training room and doing the, on the weight room recovery, all that. And then just being tough and trying to not let those little injuries affect on, on the court. I think everybody goes through it. Um, I think if you ask every player, they're always going to have something going on and, but you just got to be tough and play through it. And obviously, you guys defended uh, John Moran really well last night. And you know, look at some of the tracking numbers. You know, there's a lot of guys who contributed. Um, what, what are you kind of noticing about the, the rotation, the triple when it comes to guards and wings uh, defensively? Uh, I think we have depth on that. You know, we have Kuzma, who can play defense on, on small and, and bigs. We have Danny that has been doing a great job, too. Um, Pope. It's always uh, being in charge of the, I think he was in charge of job most of the time yesterday, but not only him or bigs too, Montrez and, and Gaff always protecting the pain. I think you, yesterday was huge for us. You know, the, the, the times where job uh, got in front of us or got into the pain, um, Gaff and, and Montrez was there to, to protect him, make it tough on him. Um, so I think it's being adjustments every game. It's different every game. It's going to be a different player with a different type of game. But uh, uh, that's something that also Coach West has been really good at, you know, just planning for the game and, and making sure we all in the same page. Um, but like I said, we have so many guys that can guard different positions and uh, we have guys that can protect the pain, which is, which is good. Eric McLucky has to be able to I mean, you all the time. Uh, I I moved from Brazil when I was still young, eighteen, uh, and I went to Spain, which is a different like language, different, and I kind of got used to it after a couple of years, you know. But there's always moments where you were home by yourself and it's it's hard you know like you have to be facetiming your family or i mean uh before this summer uh we didn't have our family together for like three years you know me my two brothers and my parents so it is tough but um i have their support you know they they know that i'm chasing my dreams i'm i'm doing what i'm best uh uh off and you know they they support me and they do everything they can to come see me when uh, when it's possible to talk to me and to stay in touch. So uh, it is hard, but, you know, we are here chasing our dreams and uh, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. Brazilian, not just in D.C., but like New York City. If you go to New York, you know, 
Um, yeah, there's like those, you know, the Fogo de Chão in Texas de Brazil, which is, it is Brazilian food, but not very authentic. Um, <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland actually has the best Brazilian restaurant. Y yes. Um, and um, I went there because Very Jean played there for a long time and he's really good friends with the, with the chef, the owner. And he told me about that, that restaurant. And I went one time and it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah, so every time I go there, I have to I have to go to that restaurant. Good feijoada, yeah. <laughs> but everything else, you know, Brazil has such a uh, it's such a huge country that if you go to north, they have some kind of food. If you go to south, a different food. For where I'm from, uh, more like center of Brazil, there's different kind of food. So and that restaurant has all of it. So. I can get a taste of every part of Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, just a basketball question. Um, <laughs> uh, yesterday you had that nifty layup against Cameron uh, in the third quarter. Um, uh, did you play, for example, like soccer growing up or anything like that to help develop your footwork? Yeah, I played. Uh, I mean, I played every sports growing up in school and. But soccer was probably the main, even before basketball, until I was 12, 13. And you definitely uh, learn a lot of footwork and kind of like get used to, you know, the counter moves and getting away with, you know, the just the body movement and uh, eye, like hand and foot coordination. I think that was huge for me uh, playing soccer growing up. So moving quickly in tight spaces, is that something that's not just yeah, and also like I have to with my size, I have to find a way. You know, I have to be able to move my my foot quick and um, you know find ways when I go into the pain. Um, but definitely, soccer I think helped me with with that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Neil. Hey, Hoel. On those same lines, have you ever had an assist? while you were on your backside before? <laughs> um, not that I remember. I think that was, the, that was the first time. And now that you guys have, you know, gotten some games under your belt, can you kind of compare and contrast how it is when you play with, you know, Aaron Holiday next to you versus, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie next to you? Do you try and alter, you know, what you're really trying to emphasize when you're on the court at all? Uh, yeah, a little bit, um, but more more uh than that it's like kind of feeling the game you know i can be playing with aaron and if i feel that you know he's he's getting high and he's uh making points and then i'll kind of like give him the ball a little more and the same way it goes if they see that i'm uh going off or somebody else is going off but i don't think it changes much since they i mean we are all kind of playing point guards and um but we understand each other well and we know that you know, call coach is going to call a play where I'll be handling the ball and Aaron's going to be as the shooting guard and, and the same uh, with Spencer. Um, but yeah, it changes a little bit, but we always kind of adjust on the court. Wes, nice bounce back win last night. Let's keep up with the uh, that today, right? Oh, uh, you know what? I think it's, it's always good to, you know, come out of a situation where you lose to play a complete game. Um, you know, for the most part, we, we play both sides of the ball. Uh, and I thought our energy level, our focus prior to the start of the game was better. Um, the guys, were di they were dialed in, um, and I felt they went out to prove something. You know, they, they took the responsibility and knew that we did not play our best and, and had to find a way to turn it around. Um, I think DA asked Brad last night, was the last time he remembered sitting out the entire fourth quarter. He's like, I really hope I get to do this. <laughs> is, he, is he telling you, like, Coach, do not put me in? No, no, no. I, no, I think uh, it's it's good, though. I mean, you know, we have to find ways and it's not it's not going to be those type games all the time. But it was a focus before the season. Can we find ways to reduce his minutes? And not dramatically, but, if, you know, two minutes a, a game, you know, through the aggregate of 82 games is significant. So does that mean, you know, he can do a little bit more on the other end of the ball? Can he, you know, dig deep come April? So I think it matters, you know, for him, for Spencer, all those high minute guys, can we find minutes, you know, if we're playing the right way and we're able to sustain leads, uh, that goes, you know, to our depth. So uh, we were able to get away with it last night, which is great. You know, those guys, 
they put in a lot of time and they have to carry us a lot, a lot of nights. So it was good to have uh, an opportunity for them to kind of take a back seat and let other guys get opportunity. Um, how important was it to get back into rhythm before facing the Bucks? Well, I mean, it's it's a normal, you know, kind of game practice, game routine, you know, where we still can touch on some things, you know, some cleanups from yesterday, some cleanups from, you know, slippage throughout you know, the, the first few games, uh, but then kind of turn the page and, and understand what we're about to face. How huge uh, has the leadership been from Brad and guys like Trez and the newcomers, but uh, young veterans, I guess, on the team to help to refocus the team under you in ways to to make this team? Well, it, it happens more often. It's not necessarily just after a loss, you know, at times even during practice. Um, and I think it's great because if it, if it has to come from us as a staff, it only goes so far. You know, once those guys start to hold each other accountable, you know, and, and make sure we're, that everyone's locked in, uh, it, it makes my, my job easier. Um, and I think the, the, them saying it makes it more impactful. How vocal is Trez? I mean, I know that it's probably the place, but uh, how sort of... <laughs> so what are you implying? I mean, like, how direct is he with his messages? He's very direct. Uh, and I think at times it's great. At other times you have to say, all right, I, I hear you, but you just have to be careful with delivery. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, he's not a guy that's going to mince words or, or hold on to it. If he has something to say, he's going to speak his mind, which is great. At least now we know where you're coming from. Uh, and he's usually, you know, about the right things. He's trying to, you know, direct guys to the right position. Uh, but, you know, he plays with that emotion. And, and I, I love it because, he, you know, wears it on his sleeve. The challenge is don't get lost in it. You know, uh, I think that at times you can, but channel it, use it the right way. And I think it's been good for him. You mentioned you uh like to see the film before you can really dissect uh, how, how you guys defended. Uh, now that you've seen it, what did you think uh, about how you guys defended John? You know, I thought our energy level was, was, was really good. You know, it's you have to pick your spots with a guy like that. You know, we're you pick him up. Uh, he's going to play a lot of pick and rolls. And so, you know, he's going to get in the paint. You know, can you rely on, um, you know, that rear view pursuit, make those tough contested twos. And he, you know, he didn't make a lot of them last night, but obviously he can't. Uh, so I, I thought Gaff did a great job of being down the floor, just kind of absorbing the role, keeping bodies in front. And then we, for the most part, did a decent job on the glass. And I think we gave up 12 offensive rebounds, which is not a good number, but they, they only scored 12 second chance points. So there's a balance. And how do you operate during halftime uh, as head coach? Is it, is it speaking to the team? Is it uh, pouring over clips in the first half? Uh, it's both. Um, we'll, we'll flag clips. Um, throughout the first half. Some at times will show during timeouts. Um, a handful will show during halftime. And those may be cleanups, reinforcements, could be a you know, teaching point if, if something has given us problems. But um, and we'll, we'll make our brief point, you know, uh, whatever the problem or issue may be, uh, and then uh, and move on. But it's, it doesn't, it's not long. We want to make sure our guys, you know, have plenty of time to kind of refocus, get, their, get themselves right physically, and, and get it back out and warm up. John Ray was a challenge. Uh, Young says the Kubo is a different type of challenge. Uh, what's going to be the key to limiting? I think very similar. I mean, uh, they're different athletes, but, you know, the, the paint defense. And he, he Ja was second in the league in, in paint points, and, and we're going to see the number one guy tomorrow. So it's got to be a priority. You know, once again, he's got to see bodies early. Uh, his length, athleticism, uh, he kind of can go wherever he wants to go and finish. You know, I think uh, in the restricted area, he's in the high 70s. So it's, you know, that's, that's tough to guard. So we, we have to be in the right spot early. Otherwise, we have no chance. Thanks for pointing that out. You sure stuff don't need me to point out. There's nothing that I know that you don't. Well, I think we have to you have to work efficiently because the most important thing is that we have legs and energy to play the game. At the same time, we we, we can't avoid 
you know, not correcting and allow continuously that slippage to, to continue. So through film, through, through uh, you know, whether it's cleanup versus coaches or, you know, half speed walkthroughs, you know, you may get one or one live segment here and there, but not a ton of contact out of fear of exposure. And, you know, with, with us being you know, short on bodies, most important thing is that we're fresh and ready to play. Um, so it's a balance, but, you know, I think we can't overlook it. It has to be done. I, I haven't seen his ankle today, um, but he did have basketball shoes on, which was a good, good sign. He was on the floor with basketball shoes. <laughs> I know that's, it, it, it seems weird, but, you know, I think with the swelling and discoloration, it was, it was, it was very uncomfortable for him to do that. So it's a step in the right direction. Uh, yes. Neil. Hey, Coach, along those lines, is Davis out for tomorrow or questionable or? No, he, he'll be out. He's still uh, uh, week to week at this point. Um, you know, we'll see how he responds next week, but I, I don't foresee him at all uh, uh, into next week. And for the Bucks in general, how much of, you know, their film, you know, is essentially what you guys spent on practice today and, you know, what other challenges besides Giannis um, did you really stress to the team? Well, I mean, they, they pose a lot of problems with the different combinations of pick and rolls they can play, you know, where you have Giannis as a screener, Giannis as a handler, you have a small setting the screen. So just kind of going through, you know, some conceptual things. Uh, we have our base in, intact, uh, but, you know, the adjustments we, we have in our back pocket, how does it look, you know, uh, not, not just for the guys involved in the two-man action, but, you know, the other three defenders. So just kind of going through different scenarios, um, you know, whether it's ISO, whether it's post-up, whether it's pick and roll, um, that are kind of out of the box of our normal standard defense. Thanks, Coach. Wayne. Hey, how you doing today, Coach? How are you? I'm pretty good. And yourself? Good, thanks. A uh, question for you. To have seven guys in double figures and to hold a team to 87 points, um, how, how how does that feel after a win? Because that you rarely see such of a balanced scoring attack like that. Can you just speak to that? Well, you know, I think I made the point yesterday. The, the assist numbers were high. Uh, and to me, it means two things. Yeah, we're sharing the ball, but, you know, we made shots. So, you know, it was the best of both worlds. Um, obviously, we got to get our, those turnover numbers down a bit. I think 19 for 20. Uh, but to see that ball move, and I think it's just reinforcement for some of the things we've been talking about for a month and a half now, you know, that we're, we're at our best when we're, uh, we have that point five mentality. That ball's moving, the ball finds the open man. Um, we've shown it in stretches, and we just haven't made shots. So, it, it you know, sometimes gets a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. but it just lends to the, you know, hey, Keep going. Keep, keep playing the right way. Eventually, things will uh, go in our favor. And last one for you, Coach. After every Wizards game, uh, me and my grandmother, we know we text and break it down. She made an observation about you and said she loves how you are confident, never panic. You just have a reassuring nature about yourself that you just feel like you're in every game. So you just talk to that. Where, where does that type of presence come from? Because I've noticed it, too. Well, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, she's obviously a sweetheart. Uh, I, you know, that's, that's just me being who I am. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it, uh, when it comes to coaching, I, I think it, it's a strength uh, at times, you know, it could also be looked at as a weakness that, you know, you, you, you don't pour your emotion into it. You don't, that's not true. Um, I have the same emotions and I just don't, they don't, I don't wear them on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it, it helps, you know, our group players in general, uh, they're not playing on eggshells. They're not looking over after every play, good or bad. Mm -hmm. looking for affirmation uh, to have that freedom to play. And, you know, I'm going to correct things that I don't like. I have no problem doing that, but, you know, I think it's also give them the freedom to play, um, give them the confidence, you know, we've established some of the, the things we're looking for and allow them to just figure it out. Um, I think that that helps them grow as players that instills confidence in them. And, and now they have confidence in each other.